Okay, guys, great work to get to the semi-finals of the Chatham Cup. This is a big opportunity for us to get a big payday with Auckland City already knocked out. And as you know, the club finances aren't too great. So if you win here, we might be able to offer you more money when we get around to contracts. So please beat Lower Heart, make the final, and then we can just give you money. Because, you know, I do want to actually keep some of you guys around here. So just win, please. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 64 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the Cashmere Technicola and the All Whites and coming up today, hopefully, going to pick up our third straight Chatham Cup here at the Tech as we're going to take on Lower Hut in the semis and hopefully go forward enough to play the final or throw in a National League Championship game off the back of the semi of that final date does get pushed back a little bit so if you're looking forward to those two games coming up in today's episode then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but yesterday we made our way back to Kashmir Tech off the back of the FIFA World Cup took on Nelson Suburbs in the Southern League and Christchurch United in the quarterfinals of the Chatham Cups. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. And this first game in today's episode is only three days off the back of that. As I said, I think the final is probably the most interesting game coming up that should be taking place before we do hit the National League Championship phase based on the schedule. And really, with only three games left in the Southern League season, and we're playing some pretty average teams as well. That should be wrapped up. So I'm hoping today we can focus on the Chatham Cup or play one game early stages of the National League Championship if that final date does get pushed back. But yesterday made our way past Christchurch United these days playing a Gagan Press here at Cashmere Technical, just like we were doing with the All Whites. And today, first chance we're actually going to get to take on Lower Hut. This is a team who have been doing quite decently in the Central League, albeit this season, not quite so much, because they're in fifth, but are an affiliate of the Wellington Phoenix, so we can't actually play them in the National League Championship, because they can't qualify with the Phoenix Reserves being guaranteed a spot in that competition. So one of the few chances we're going to get here to take on Lower Hutter team, who have been beating the likes of Western Suburbs of late, so definitely a team that we need to respect, especially off the back of last season, where they finished quite high in terms of of that central league, but still at the GMP, hoping this is a game where we can pick up a win. And thankfully, all the players available for that quarterfinal yesterday are available again somehow, even despite the three-day gap. They have all recovered nicely, even though we are semi-pro. Justin Keat is still out with a pull calf. Most of the other players up there are on trial, but thankfully, everyone is available who was for that quarterfinal. So I think just going to get straight into the action for this first game of today's episode and hopefully make it to yet another Chatham Cup final as we host Lower Hut. And here are the team sheets for this Chatham Cup semi-final. We will take on the winner of the other semi, which is between both Eastern and Western Suburbs, our best 11, but Paquette at right wing with that injury to Justin Keat. There are Lower Hut also going with a 4-2-3-1 and hopefully we can make our way to the Chatham Cup final yet again. And just show the five minute mark, the first highlight of this game is a goal kick in our favour. We take that one out to the right hand side, and Georgios Victoros starts to creep forward before playing that one to Sukumoto up to Piquet. A tackle there on Al Ghazali does mean that Lower Hut here in the red and the white shorts. Interesting colours considering they're an affiliate of the Wellington Phoenix, but they were on the attack there, thankfully. Smith, I think that was, wins that ball back for us down our left hand side. Really good first competitive game for the club in yesterday's episode. Lots of assists, especially from corners. But now we're on the attack. Janssen, that pass. A little bit behind Smith, but thankfully back on the attack. Schuster swears that one for Lorenzo Janssen, who will put that one away. A player who's currently actually unhappy at the club because we did sell Stephen Lopez to the Wellington Phoenix seeing as he was a player we could actually get money for and our wage budget problems. But that is a good start, even though it was clunky at times. Schuster, Smith finds him in space. And this time he'll pick up the assist. Johnson puts it away, bottom right corner, and we take a very early 1-0 lead. And we go forward now to about the 20-minute mark for the next highlight of this game in Lower Hut here with a goal kick, and they'll try and make their way out from the back. They eventually get it forward, and that's actually a nice ball over the top there 
for Tupper, and he will beat Josh Hawkins. Minaj Tupper will put that one away. It's really the first attack that they've had in this game that's made its way into our final third. And Lower Hut do grab an equaliser at the GMP. Willix there plays that one for a good one touch pass and a lovely ball over the top there. It gets the better. I think that is a Victoros. Indeed, it is too much pace for him, which is a bit surprising because he actually showed some good pace at times during yesterday's episode, but Papa has too much for him. Beats Hawkins, and it's one all halfway through the first half. Albeit not too long for back of that equaliser for Lower Hut. We were on the attack there, but unfortunately, McNicholas can come and claim that one for Lower Hut. So we'll see what happens in this highlight. Maybe Lower Hut going to prove some quite stern opposition for us here in the semi final, albeit that's a poor mistake at the back. Really lazy from a Lower Hut, but unfortunately, that shot, it comes off the woodwork, nearly making the most there of some sloppy work at the back from our central league opposition, but still one all. And it looks like that might do it for the first half, making our way here into only one minute of added time. Unfortunately, Lower Hart have scored their only shot on target, so that seems to be continuing over from the vertical tiki taka to this gag and press. But to be fair, everyone out there on a pretty good rating, and stats wise, would definitely been the better team, just need to be a bit more clinical in front of goal. Hopefully, that'll be the case in the second half. We can make our way through to that Chatham Cup final. In early stages here of the second half, I just noticed that Lorenzo Janssen's dropped quite suddenly there to a red heart. So I think we'll play things safe. He's quite injury prone. We'll take him off. Or Nathan Walker Gilbert can move into that cam roll with still 40 minutes left in this one. And we're just coming up here to the 69 minute mark and Gilpicket since moving to that cam unfortunately hasn't actually improved his rating on a 6.4 so we're going to make another sub here. Shusha can go into the cam and Michael James Gilbert can play left wing. Also might try Walker on attack as that right winger because the fear this probably the most average performance so far with the Gagan press definitely on the front foot will also go a bit wider but it's still one all with only 20 minutes left. And shortly off the back of those changes, the highlight does start here as we make our way into the last 20 minutes of this game. They hump it deep there, do lower hut, but thankfully McGoldrick can win that one in the air and hit it down to Sukumoto. It goes back to him here as we look to now camp inside of the opposition half eventually. If we stop playing it with our center backs, now Victoros, he will find Sukumoto. Goes back to Victoros, playing a higher tempo, but still just taking our time here on the ball. Walker actually plays that ball inside. Al Ghazali back out there to Sukumoto. Does get in behind McNicholas. I think he was expecting a lot more of his defenders because Sukumoto just pumps that one inside of the near post. Off the back of that, just going to cancel things because was about to demand more. Instead, we will praise that should make everyone a lot happier. Al Ghazali to Sukumoto. And from there, no one picks up the defensive midfield, which I suppose is understandable when you've got Al Ghazali alongside him as well. Is someone like Gilbert, but we go in front here with only about 15 minutes left and also going to make our last sub Smith down to Red Hart. Barisic will come on for him. And just into the last 10 minutes now of this game off the back of that goal, which did put us in front about 10 ago and near Lower Hut try and clear their lines, albeit quite poorly. And Barisic can get us here on the attack. He makes his way into the box and puts that one home. Tomislav Barisic with only his second goal this season to be fair when we were using him before signing Xavier Smith. He was actually doing a pretty good job as a wing back on support, but he comes on the field and scores a goal. That's pretty much thanks to a really poor clearance there from a lower hut. Just put themselves under pressure, trying to play out from the back. It's taking a while, but eventually getting on top here of our central league opposition. That will make it 3-1 as we make our way into the last five minutes of this game. And we should now have done enough to make sure we're going to be in the Chatham Cup final yet again. The fourth year in a row for the club the third year in a row under my management. Hopefully we can make it three Chatham Cups in a row as well, especially with no Auckland City. As we found out yesterday, that means quite nice payday on offer for us here, especially with the financial situation at the club. That would be quite nice, but here Lower Hutt going to try and clear their lines. Unfortunately, a bit of a loose touch there, but thankfully Orton, really poor pass, and Leon Enrique can get us back on the attack here. Shusha with a finish with his left foot, that one. Way too much power on it for McNicholas. And now we're just running away with this one late. Three goals inside the latter stages of this game to make it 4-1. And eventually the Gagan press, it does pay off. But Lower Hutt kind of shooting themselves in the foot here late with some poor play out from that. But Shusha, that is a wonderful goal. Left foot like a traction engine. And that one goes into the back of the net. And we end up picking up a 4-1 when the scoreline 
probably flitters us a bit in that game. We did leave it late, but thankfully do get the job done. And we might be coming back later on for a Chatham Cup final off the back of a 4-1 win over Lower Hutt. And going forward a few clicks off the back of that 4-1 win in the semi-finals over Lower Hutt. That is still the plan because this final is scheduled to take place on the 14th of September. And we take on Eastern Suburbs, the team currently third in the Northern League. They beat Western Suburbs 1-0 in that semi-final. And that is the game that we will hopefully be coming back for, albeit between now and then, are going to round off the Southern League phase of the National League. So we'll see if that changes once those fixtures do go in, but you'd imagine in between now and then, going to wrap that up with an eight-point lead and only three games left. But if things go well, we'll come back for that Chatham Cup final against the Eastern Suburbs. And indeed, we've gone forward and finished off the Southern League phase of the National League. And as you can see on screen, the National League Championship has started, and it's pushed back that Chatham Cup final by a couple of weeks. So instead of playing that today, we're going to do that start of next week and actually take on a team I used to manage on my first series here on the channel to glory in my hexagon challenge the ifc champions league back then when it was the isps hunter premiership we'll take on hamilton wanderers and that one is away from home so we can go back to porrit stadium do a bus trip for a party at the port but before then to play our last three games of the southern league start off with a free no win over roslyn wykery that was enough for us to lift the toll i'm pretty sure you guys have seen enough of us now lifting trophies you know what that animation does look like and off the back of that very comfortable wins over Selwyn United 6-1 and Otago University 8-0. So a very good finish there to the Southern League. For us here at Cashmere Technical, here's what the tables do look like. We'll go down to the Southern League first. We won it. Christchurch United actually finished in second. Nelson Suburbs did start a late and in the end actually finished eight points behind Christchurch United, which looked a bit unlikely with the games in hand that those guys did have. The Central League, Western Suburbs won it. Wellington Olympic. They were second, and Waterside Karori finished fourth, lower hut third, but as we've mentioned, they can't go up to the National League Championship. Napier City Rovers, they get relegated, and from the Southern League, it was Roslyn Wykery who got relegated, and the Northern League's quite interesting. Auckland City only finishing in second. They dropped some points in and around the OFC Champions League semi-final that we did play against them, and they also dropped points at other times in the season, so it does mean that Manurewa are the champions of the Northern League. Maybe Auckland City won't quite be as strong as they have been in previous seasons. Also going through Eastern Suburbs and obviously Hamilton Wanderers, seeing as we are about to play them, but this could be a quite good test for us next game, seeing as those two teams did finish up on the same points, albeit goal differential, quite heavily in favour of Eastern Suburbs and Waikiki United and Bay Olympic are going down to the second tier there. Of the Northern Leagues, that's what's happened in terms of the Northern Central and Southern Leagues. We've already played one game in the championship phase, and we picked up a very comfortable win in the end, 3-0 over the Phoenix Reserves. I say comfortable, it was pretty solid. Two first half goals there to Al-Ghazali and Paquette, and Paquette picked up a double in the second half, and we do grab a 3-0 win Sukamoto with an injury, but thankfully nothing too serious, which is good. It does also mean we do now have Western Suburbs coming up before that Chatham Cup final. That could be a tricky game, especially because a couple of players are sitting on yellow cards. So we might put out a bit more of a rotated team for that game just to make sure that our best team is available for that Chatham Cup final because of money reasons and whatnot. But things going well for us here at Cashmere Technical, and we're going to take on my former Hexagon Challenge team in Hamilton Wanderers. They will look nothing like what we had back in that save, considering been a couple of years in real life, and also we're now at 20-30 in-game, but these guys did finish fourth in the Northern League, and they did start off the National League Championship with a 3-0 loss to Eastern Suburbs, our opposition in the Chatham Cup final, so definitely this is a team that we should be beating, and hopefully we can do it fairly comfortably as well. In terms of the squad going into this game, thankfully no injury concerns, Justin Keat is back, albeit just managing him a bit carefully, still on a heavy workload, and also actually renewed a couple of contracts since that first game of today's episode, because finally, some of our players actually wanted that to be the case, which we'll is find the guys who we did renew. First up, it was Mohanad Al-Ghazali, 
quite important considering no Stephen Lopez here anymore. A couple of Iraqi clubs, they were after him. So thankfully, because of that, he wanted to enter negotiations and actually took a pay cut. So good work there from Mohamed Al Ghazali. That reduces our wage budget just a little bit. And another player who will be staying a little bit longer here at Kashmir. Technical, quite importantly too, Oli McGoldrick, who of course isn't that far away from being an option in the all-white squad. We'll just check how far it is until he becomes a New Zealander. Still just over a year, but to be fair, his contract does now run until the end of 2033. So he should be here until he does become an all-whites option. And with those attributes, he's definitely someone who can make his way into the squad. No pay drop for him, but don't mind that considering he's the vice captain and has been doing a pretty good job for us here since he did make the move on a free from Wellington Olympics. So a couple of players that we have got to extend beyond this season. The rest of them can't enter into contract negotiations with them just yet because they know they're probably in for a wage drop and they don't want that. The FMAI quite smart for a change before we take on Hamilton Wanderers in our second game of the National League Championship. It's time for a trip up to Hamilton and to do a bus trip to Porrit Stadium. And unlike our trip to Nelson in yesterday's episode, this time actually going to fly up the day before the game, so it does mean have to go hotel hunting. Unfortunately, the website for the Novotel Hamilton Tainui isn't coming up, which is a bit annoying, but still, we can see the photos. It's the best rated one, which is close-ish to Pirate Stadium, so this is where we're going. Here's a gym, looks fairly decent. I think that will do a little bit expensive but I think we can cop it, especially if we can win the Chatham Cups. So we're going to stay at the Novotel Hamilton Tainui, which is actually quite close to the Waikato River and also Sky City Hamilton, which could be some interesting times off the back of this game that we're about to play. But in terms of the trip itself, it is a 10-minute drive. And to be fair, once we get past the Waikato River, not too sure if there's too much to look at. We go past Baldwin's Park and then we're supposed to go past the church and some massage therapy. I'm thinking we go up this street instead and go past the Goddess Belly Dance class, just cause why not? And then we'll connect back up there, go past St. Paul's Collegiate School and we'll eventually make our way up there to Porrick Stadium. We'll see if anything else interesting does pop up on the way. But I think the early stages of this one by the river should be quite interesting. And also, if we don't drive off the bridge, which hopefully we won't do, because I'm pretty sure that river has had some chlamydia issues in the past, but we'll go past the belly dance class as well, and then should be pretty close to Porrit Stadium for this upcoming game. And here is where we do start things off. Here's the outside of the Nova Talby Stang. As you can see, some lovely design there on the outside of this one. So quite happy with this choice over the road. Got a Thai restaurant and also just there an Italian one as well down the road a little bit there's something else and as i said also nearby there is the sky city so it's quite a nice area that we're staying at here also another italian restaurant there's lots of food nearby a bank this looks pretty solid we're going to make our way this way and start our journey towards porrit stadium we're going to start off here with a bit of a right hand turn there you can see all these shopping nearby some souvenirs a shoe clinic and whatnot we'll make our way here down the road with a very interesting divide that looks quite green, quite nice, all the carbon footprint stuff that should be dealing with. We make our way here kind of alongside the Hamilton River, going past some sushi shops, definitely quite a bit of food around here and also a time zone. All the old arcade games and the newer ones, they'll definitely keep me busy while the boys are getting ready for the game, having their showers, which probably take pretty long being football players and whatnot we'll go down here a bit further as i said alongside the waikato river which is running that way unfortunately can't see it too well but we'll come back and we go past something interesting on this bus trip and we've made our way down the rest of that road on victoria street here lots of shops started to get a little bit more of these sort of family run businesses instead of the big chains after a while we're about to take a right hand turn here and we'll start to make our way across the waikato river Let's hope we don't drive our minibus off of the bridge because that's definitely something we've done before on these bus trips. Even did it in Nelson yesterday. I have a bad feeling that might be about to happen again. I can't click on things. So I think we'll just skip over the bridge, but you can see the river there. It's a river. 
don't go swimming in it. I've heard bad things about that river, as I said earlier. Yeah, if you're there, maybe avoid swimming in the river, go swim in a pool where the water's clean, but we'll make our way over the bridge and continue the bus trip. And we've made our way down Boundary Road to Beefy. There's not a lot going on here. We are just making our way past the massage therapy body care. If anyone in Hamilton wants to get sorted out, go check those guys out, I think. Not too sure if they're any good, but they're on the bus trip. Maybe a quick stop there on our way to the ground, but we're supposed to be taking a left-hand turn here to Fairfield. I'm gonna be adventurous and go past this because I think the other road did look a bit more interesting. So we'll go around the roundabout and continue and go down the road, which of course had the body dance class. And of course, one of the main reasons that we actually did that was so you could have a look at Claudlin's Park. It's definitely not because I'm fixated with body dancing or anything like that. But over on the right hand side, there is Claudlin's Park. Looks like here, a couple of people walking their dogs around it and whatnot, but nice park there on the right hand side. Looks a bit nicer than probably what we would have seen down that other road if we headed towards Fairfield. That just sounds boring. We want to go past the park and also the body dance class. And thankfully for the guys getting sick now, the GPS telling us we've gone the wrong way. We can make a stop here at Z or at the McDonald's on the right hand side, grab some food while I sort that out, rejig myself, and we'll go left here towards Chartwell and go up this road. I'm pretty sure this was the one with all the interesting stuff, even more food here, and also a post and paper shop. Didn't even know they still had those in New Zealand. Also a dairy, lots of good stuff, a bakery, all the food things, phone and laptop repair. That's a nice little stretch of shops. We'll go down here a little bit and start to make our way towards some very interesting businesses by the sound of it. And we're starting to make our way now towards the highlight of this trip, I think, in the Goddess Belly Dance class. Just down the road from there is a kindergarten, which is interesting because I did think for a minute here we were about to discover the red light district of Hamilton, but apparently not. But coming up here on the left hand side, we'll just see if we can get a look at it. Uh, hopefully there's a sign to show us that it's coming up. Is it hidden there on the left hand side? It might be. I can't really tell. Is that belly dance? It's the Radius St. Jones Rest Home Hospital, so I don't think that's it. But to be fair, there's not a lot else nearby. Is it an elderly belly dance class? That That's not, not quite as exciting as I was hoping for, but we'll just see if maybe it's down the road a little bit more. More rest home stuff. I think we've gone past the belly dance class now. Is it on the left-hand side, or is it actually at the rest home that that would be very very disturbing but we'll just see it could be one of these houses but i'm not too sure if it is because it looks like she's going away now from the ballet dance class so i don't think my diversion has paid off here it's actually just going to make me have nightmares tonight now probably ballet dancing at a rest home but we'll keep going down here link up with where we we're supposed to be going and here we are joining back up with where we were supposed to be going. We're going to go straight through this roundabout here, go past yet another shop precinct there with some Domino's Pizza and also a Copeland's, another bakery here in New Zealand to go past yet another rest home. Down that road past the belly dance class for the elderly. So it wasn't quite as racy as I thought it might be. Maybe the elderly red light district. Yeah, I'm going to have nightmares tonight. I need to stop talking about this stuff. Let's hopefully get to the stadium soon. And now that we're back on the track that we should have been taking all along, we're actually going past the college here in St. Paul's Collegiate School. And to be fair, they've got a pretty big ground there that they can play their sports on out the back. So maybe if you're a sports player in Hamilton going through the college years, this is where you should go. Looks like some people there might be playing cricket in the background when this was taken. Indeed, that's the case. That is a massive ground, especially because they've still got up the rugby posts and whatnot. If we go down here just a little bit further, but St. Paul's Collegiate School, pretty big sports grounds, it's fair to say, but I don't think we're too far away now from the Pirate Stadium. And indeed, we're getting pretty close now as we've made our way down Crosby Road just a little bit and somewhere down here. I think we just keep going straight and we should hit the car park for the Pirate. Of course, as I said, a venue I used to manage at in FM back when I did the Hexagon Challenge in my first series here on the channel. We took over at Hamilton Wanderers after they did win the OFC Champions League the year before. We went there, yet for some reason, their manager did depart as we make our way here past the fire station and I think down there there is Pirate Stadium 
indeed there it is pretty subtle driveway and entrance no big signs that we'll see if this changes as we go down here doesn't look like that is the case but we'll see if this is where we should be going it actually looks like here might have taken a little bit of a wrong turn but we'll see what's around Pirate Stadium here if we start to get near the Hamilton Wanderers club rooms or anything like that we go down here a little bit more it's looking promising there's the club rooms of Hamilton Wanderers Google Maps you got no idea there is Pirate Stadium I imagine this is where they're playing just over the back here we'll see if indeed that is the case to be fair does look like a pretty small ground so maybe they play a bit further there over to the left hand side but we'll see what i can find on google maps but we've made our way to the home of hamilton wanderers and it does look like that area in behind the club rooms is actually the ground here's what it does look like when it's actually marked up with the goals there little tiny stand on the left hand side so definitely not the biggest outfit here hamilton wanderers there you can see the club rooms from a different angle Another view of the sign for the stadium itself. Another view of the club rooms. There is inside of the club rooms itself, unfortunately. Not too many trophies there, seeing as I'm no longer in charge. Another view there of the ground. Here's where the blue army goes. Not sure if you can call it an army with that amount of room in your stand, but anyway, there's a look at Pirate Stadium, where hopefully we can make it two wins from two to start the National League Championship. And here are the team sheets for the second game of today's episode. There are Hamilton Wanderers. They're going with a 4-4-2. To be fair, we're in quite good form before they took on Eastern Suburbs in that most recent game. In terms of us resting a couple of players who are just a little bit injury prone at the moment before that Chatham Cup final. So it does mean we've got Barisic at left back. We've got Gilbert up front. The Hopman de Villiers out left. And also Brown in the camera. So just giving a rest there to a couple of first team regulars before we do hit that Chatham Cup final in a couple of games time. But hopefully can still get the job done here in the National League. And just past the 15 minute mark here, first highlight of this game is a free kick. And Ike Sukamoto puts that one top right corner. Hamilton Wanderers early. Their discipline has been pretty poor already. They've picked up free yellow cards yet again. Going to cancel the shout. Was going to encourage all praise instead because that is a heck of a free kick. You got started here from Ike Sukamoto. He might quite like this party at the Pirate. He gives us an early 1 0 lead. Now, about 10 minutes off the back of that opening goal, another really good position here for Ike Sukamoto, you imagine, to try and make it a double from free kicks. And to be fair, this one might be actually from a better position, but unfortunately, that one just goes a bit high and clips the crossbar. But so far, we're looking a bit like set piece FC, even though we're definitely the team on the front foot, but only 1 0 in front. And it looks like those might be the only two highlights of the first half there, those two free kicks from Sukamoto, one hitting the woodwork and one before that making its way into the back of the net. Hamilton Wanderers, lots of yellow cards. That might be something which comes back to bite them in the second half, but definitely dominant in this game. Unfortunately, haven't quite picked up a cushion goal just yet. We're actually going to take off Sukamoto on a little bit of a deep yellow heart for Taylor Tamer and also might take off Gil Paquette as well for Kett on the bench. We'll bring him in here just to try and get that fitness level back up, as you can see, on a bit of a red downward arrow. So a couple of changes there at half time. Hopefully they might help us grab some cushion goals in the second half, playing well, but only 1-0 in front. And it hasn't taken long at all here for the first highlight of the second half, a free kick, which Victor Ross does head down there for McGoldrick, but unfortunately that shot does get blocked. We'll see if anything else does happen from this highlight. The ball finds its way back to Victor Ross, and it does not. And shortly off the back of that, there's a frame for Hamilton Wanderers. Thankfully, they give us the ball straight back. So definitely, this feels like a game that so far we haven't quite been as clinical as we could be in. So Hamilton Wanderers are definitely still in this game, only being a goal down. But hopefully, we can grab a cushion goal sooner rather than later. Brown makes his way just inside the box, goes back out. Keat plays it back to Louis Enrique. Dirty raid on with a shot, but unfortunately, that one gets blazed high and wide. And we're still... Only one nil in front before we can wrap up that. Another highlight does start here at the 53 minute mark of Frown, and we find Brown goes back there to Taylor Tamer, the former Wellington Olympic and AFC Auckland man. Now Gilbert dropping back to play that one out to Barisic to Hotman de Villiers. Does his man there, tries to square that one nicely for Sam Brown. He'll put that one home, and finally, we grab a cushion goal in this game. Lots of early pressure in the second half, and thankfully, 
that will get the job done and make it 2-0. And hopefully now that will take us a fair way towards picking up six points from our first two games in the National League Championship as we take a buffer goal lead over Hamilton Wanderers. And maybe a chance for us now to make it 3-0 and really put this game to bed is just shy of the hour night. We have a corner here. We take it short for Gilbert. He gets pressured there, but thankfully still finds a way to shift that one onto Barisic. Victoros with a header across the face of goal, but unfortunately that one does come off the woodwork, so not quite doing the job from corners in this game. Looks like it's free kicks instead as we now make our way past the hour mark. Still 2-0 in front, in fact, just as we try and wrap that one up, there is now a highlight as Hamilton Wanderers poorly try and make their way up from back of Tamer. Gets that one back for us, picks out Barisic, who scored in the previous game. It fizzes in there to the mixer. It's an absolute cluster at the back from Hamilton Wanderers. And Sam Brown can just power that one home into the top right corner. Does the Carlton. He's very happy on a hat trick and makes it 3-0 here. He's having an interesting party at the port. But Barisic kind of sets up this goal. Big cluster at the back, Sam Brown. Right place, right time. And that should put this game to bed as we take a 3-0 lead. And just about to make our way into the last 15 minutes of this game, we've got a couple of players on Red Hearts. Leo Enrique unfortunately can't take him off because he's under 20 and no under 20 players on our bench because Connor Kerwin we left out because he's on a heavy workload. So the sub we're going to make take off Victor Ross for Courtney Perkins, still with a 3-0 lead. And about to make our way into injury time in this game, to be fair, hasn't been a game of too many highlights, but thankfully good first half there, especially that free kick from Aiki Sukamoto and put the foot down just a little bit more in that second half with a double to Sam Brown, yet again with the Gagan press, looking very good here, very dominant, and just a bit more efficient in front of goal than we were with the vertical tiki taker. Hopefully we can continue our unbeaten streak with that tactic when we come back at the start of next week for the Chatham Cup final, but that is a good start to the championship phase of the National League. We beat our former team from the Hexagon Challenge and Hamilton Wanderers 3-0. So two good results for us there in the two games that we did show you in today's episode as well, of course, is that first week of the National League Championship. We picked up a win over the Wellington Phoenix Reserves, and that does mean currently we are on top of the table, albeit only thanks to Gold Differential over both Auckland City and Western Suburbs. And the other two teams, we take on either side of Eastern Suburbs in the Chatham Cup final. So those next two games could actually be quite big, especially because probably... Going to have to rest some first teamers against Western Suburbs just to make sure no key players are out with suspension for that Chatham Cup final. But to be fair, Minurewa, they just dropped points to Eastern Suburbs, which is interesting considering they were the Northern League champions. Maybe Auckland City might be a bit more focused now that they're not taking part in an OFC Champions League during the course of this National League Championship. Of course, also probably want to right some wrongs from their Chatham Cup campaign as well, but that will do it. For today's episode, unfortunately, that Chatham Cup final, it did get delayed, but we're in it off the back of a win over Lower Hutt, also picked up the Southern League and off to a good start in the championship phase of the National League. If you enjoyed this one, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back at the start of next week and still focus on Kashmir Technical, we'll play Eastern Suburbs in that Chatham Cup final. I'll just check, because it's already looking like Auckland City might be a potential opponent in that championship final, and we've already played them a little bit this season. I do know there's a window coming up with the All Whites, and we could include an All Whites game in that episode as well, against either Guinea, who are ranked 49th in the world, or Cape Verde, who are 44th. So we might do one of those two international friendlies, our first ones off the bat of making the quarterfinals at the World Cup with the All Whites alongside that Chatham Cup final come the start of next week. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.